after a two weeks of inundation, a storm, a flood of promotion and publicity, the curtain is about to pull, and Super Bowl XX will play to this enthusiastic audience in New Orleans. Peyton Drill fumbles the ball, and who has it? The New England Patriots do. And this is the pattern of the underdogs from New England forcing the turnovers. 16 of them in the first three playoff games. And the underdogs have come up with a big break today. Eason over the middle to Morgan through his hands, and he had a touchdown. Mike Singletary, the middle linebacker, may have gotten a piece of the ball in flight. The coverage. Look at the way he goes back to help Leslie Frazier here. Arriving at the last second and reaching in. I don't think he got a piece of that ball, but he bothered the receiver, the normally reliable Stanley Morgan, who was thinking touchdown all the way. Out of the shotgun. Here comes the rush. Open is starring, incomplete in the end zone. The Bears put a clock on you. There comes Wilson from the backside, and Eason feels the teeth of this bear rush. He just barely had time to throw it and hang it out there. It's on its way, and New England has the early lead. Franklin good from 36. Peyton's fumble turns into early points for the Patriots. Going long to Galt. He's there, and it's a big game for the Bears to the 25-yard line. Galt simply outruns LePet, and LePet making the turn did not see the ball in time, or he could have knocked it away. Man likes to run. He's got his avenue. Oh, what a hit at the 10-yard line by Ronnie LePet. Oh, my. McMahon, as you may have heard early, has suffered from a bruised hip all week long. Well, this shot will not help that body of his. Yeah, we thought we were going to leave his uh, derriere behind, so to speak, in the Sugar Bowl here in this stadium. And he's got it. With nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter, it's tied at three. Jim McMahon, we understand... Uh, Nothing bruised but his feelings on that cartwheel tackle of LePet. They've done nothing but pass in this first quarter. And so it is. And Eason will eat it. He was sacked six times in the second game of the year by the Bear defense. He's down for the first time today. Watch the two defensive linemen inside driving to this side. And coming from here around the other side, a defensive lineman that's going to pop free. Or make that Wilbur Marshall, number 58. A linebacker who gets wide open up the middle. And that's the way they'll do it. They simply overman you. You haven't got enough bodies to block all those bears. Moles and all of the tendencies that he's established in the playoffs. It's McMahon off play action, and he's going deep. Galt at the 47-yard line. Galt who caught a 43-yard toss to set up the bear field goal. Man strong enough to throw that pass, pick up the big game. Collins and James behind him. It's Craig James. And nothing there except bear defense. Mike Singletary, 50, plugging the hole. Sideline to take the signals. Watch his arms. He's calling defensive adjustments right up till the snap of the ball and then explodes quickly into James's legs. What a hitter he is. Second down and 10. Eason dragged down by Steve McMichael. Fumbles. The Bears have it. At they rule it. Yes, it is a fumble. A number 99, Dan Hampton, has it for the Bears. And they're attacking those Patriots right here. McMichael from the outside, Hampton from the outside. But there's McMichael working right there on 61 Wooten. And the ball already is loose as Easton heads for the ground. And there's the celebration by Dan Hampton. Fuller, Steve Fuller holds. And the Bears lead 6-3, but for the Patriots, the moral victory, they stop Chicago first and goal at the three. On the ground to Craig James. Caught in the backfield. And a fumble, and the Bears have it again. 
I think he's talked to them and said, hey, these Patriots have been stripping the ball away. Let's strip it ourselves. 95 attacks the football. Look at him right here, just stripping it away from James and dropping it down. Fensick there quickly to get his hands on it. We told you that Dent led the NFL with 17 sacks. He also led the Bears with seven forced fumbles with plays like this. And he's given the offense another golden opportunity. 6-3, Bears lead and have the pumpkin at the New England 13. Whoops. Don Blackman was offside. So he is in the end zone for a touchdown. The flag is down, but unless Blackman was drawn offside, Chicago has six more. Offside. Touchdown, Bears. You'll see number 55, and he just got off too quickly and then stopped, and that's the mistake. You never stop on defense when you go offside because that's exactly what can happen to you. It's a free play for the offense. That one ended up with a free touchdown. Back-to-back -to -back fumbles by New England, and the Bears pick up 10 quick points and have the lead with just seconds left in the first quarter. Matt Suey, the touchdown maker. And look, in the hole, a minus 22, the New England offense. They've got it in reverse at the moment, and they've got to change and go the other direction. King, man, the bear. Eason, knocked away. A good play by Mike Richardson at the left corner. Very one-sided stats. Boy, how many times do you see negative rushing, negative passing, negative total yards, and, of course, the possession time, which the Bears have dominated all year long, and he's outspoken. Eason to Greg Hawthorne, and on his back is Dan Hampton. Hampton not fooled a bit, and the giant end from Arkansas registers another loss. Right in the middle of that defensive line, 99. Watch him here around Pete Brock, number 58, and they almost had that play pop to the outside. They were going to hand it off to Hawthorne in motion, but Hampton... Man, looking long to Suey, and it's another big game for the Bears at the 15-yard line. And they are throwing everything at New England. Moorhead, one of the tight ends in motion. Perry, what drives through, and following behind is McMahon for the touchdown. It almost looked like an option play, and there you see McMahon head-butting with his offensive line. Here's Perry driving, faking, and then just driving somebody. Oh, my goodness. Did he destroy Ooh, Larry, Larry McGrew? McGrew. <laughs> I think Larry McGrew thought he'd been run over by a truck. As they have jumped out to a 17-point lead. Second and nine. Collins. He's dropped no gain. Wilbur Marshall. In fact, a two-yard loss is Marshall. From Florida, the second-year man makes the hit. Well, the Pulse has given us that kind of yardage. Negative 25 for the Patriots. The Bears, of course, dominating offensively on their line of scrimmage. Now, Eason out of the shotgun, and here they come. Oh, my. Otis Wilson, a Pro Bowl linebacker, was there first. He he said he felt that Eason would still have scars from the earlier game when he was confused. You see what Eason is doing? He's jumping around. He didn't even know where to run on that play. Didn't know where to throw. Didn't know where to run. I, listen, I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to stand down there. Boy, that Bear defense has been awesome in this first half. And now, I don't know if Bears bit him in the line. I don't know. Where I do it. Oh, almost. And New England has it at the 46-yard line, so the Patriots get a break. And I'm not so sure that Easton and that offense want to go back out. Oh, Grogan's out there. Steve Grogan, the veteran from Kansas State, playing on a knee that is hardly 100%. The veteran, and he chases the fly swat. It was wide open. That ball is up for grabs, and no one saw it. Richard Dent, what a force he has become. Reminds me of the... Well, your former teammate, Deacon Jones, so quick off the ball, always around it. 
And there he uses those long arms to knock one high in the air. Like he's gliding off the ball. Here he is coming off on Holloway who lets him go. He goes right up in the air. That looks like he's spiking a volleyball when he got up there. An almost identical play in the Ram game two weeks ago. In that play, it was McMichael who almost got it and headed in for a touchdown. Collins is into Bears territory with the first New England completion. It comes with four minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. Eason will not be pleased to remind himself of those stats. James and a first down, the first of the game for the Patriots. And he had to throw it away as that 46 defense just in on Grogan before he could even search out his intended target, Stanley Morgan. For all the middle of the line occupied, so that leaves someone free. Here he comes. Oof. Otis Wilson from the outside. 52 seconds as McMahon complete at the 12-yard line to Ken Marjoram. Four wide receivers in. McMahon going to run it wide open. He's all the way to the two. Now they'll quickly sit up, try to at least get. Now that'll stop the uh, clock and an unwise play by a New England Patriot. Well, they, no, haven't they haven't stopped, stopped the clock it. yet. And Down to four seconds, three. There'll be a penalty on that as there were players all over the field, but that doesn't matter. The Bears will still get a shot at the field goal. That was a an egg beater of a play down there. That's <laughs> right. And he nails it. Not kicked artfully, but good direction. Three field goals, and that's the way the Bears cap this domination of the first 30 minutes of Super Bowl 20. Words from for you. No, first let's go to Bob Costas. Minus 19 yards offensively in the first half for the Patriots. Just one first down. Ahmad. But I think they may be in over their heads at this point. Axe, what do you say? <laughs> we are looking at men against boys. Oh, Axe. Well, strong, strong commentary by Pete Axel. Well, we'll see you for the post-game show. I'll be in the winner's locker room, and I'm tiptoeing toward the Bears' side right now. And uh, the miseries of the Patriots reflecting in those minus hash marks. Even in the two earlier games against the Giants and the Rams, who, who must be feeling a little bit better after watching this game, the stats were not as negative at the half. Nine first downs is the fewest anyone has had in a Super Bowl game, and the Patriots picked up only one in the entire half. He's had only nine first downs. Grogan tastes the bite of that defensive rush. Steve McMichael, 76, was there first, and 95, Richard Dent, to polish him off. High school football in Atlanta, Georgia. Oof. Look at the speed of this man, 6'5 and 263 pounds. Does he close? Second and 20. Here they come. A jailbreak. Wilson and Hampton this time. If it were a fight, they'd have to stop it. Watch the number of bodies in bear uniforms that are coming in. Three of them clean. And Grogan had just barely had time to set up back there. Well, way on the fly. McMahon with good play action going for the bomb from his own end zone to Galt. They won't catch him except by the shirt tail. Marion saved the touchdown. Few teams have been able to do during the year against the Patriot defense. Repeatedly strike for the big game. And Galt who's had his Perry is in the refrigerator. He's the lone setback now, and it's all disguised. McMahon rolls in a somersault six, and the Bears lead 29 to three. Well, he marches uh, to his own drummer. That caps a 96-yard drive in nine plays for the Bears. They've done it from short range. Now they've done it the full length of the field. Quarterback what? sneak. Zipka, as you told us earlier, put it back into the book for him. There's McMahon, the spike, and the headbutt. <laughs> Tom Thayer and Keith Van Orn, a guard and a tackle in the act. The flag is down. We'll clear that up when we return. 
yard line. Here's McMahon. He scored. Roland James will reach in. McMahon wants to spike it. James just casually knocks the ball out of his hands. McMahon in turn throws it at James. And after that, a little push and shove. And the penalty went against New England. 15 yards. And the Bears will kick off from the 50. And that carry. Here they come. And intercepted for a touchdown, the rookie Reggie Phillips. No doubt about this one, the Bears' long drought for Chicago will end here in New Orleans. Ramsey, a tight end. That ball was thrown behind him. He had to turn back. Just got enough to bat it up. And Phillips knew exactly where he was going. Joining Herb Adderley, Willie Brown, and Jack Squirek with Super Bowl intercept TDs. He want Buddy Ryan to stay. He was going to be swept out with Armstrong. Long to Morgan. And broken up by Mike Richardson at the last moment not terribly happy that he couldn't choose all of his own staff but let's look at Morgan on that play working man to man on Richardson with time for Grogan he gets that ball deep but Richardson again closes as that ball slightly underthrown he gets his hands on it and knocks it away well we start to uh, deal in those kinds of statistics and we're only six minutes left in the third quarter could be the biggest route in history has all the earmarks doesn't it complete and then a fumble and the Bears have it again Wilbur Marshall at the 40 Marshall laterals to Wilson hello and finally Wilson down at the 38 and they're playing playground with the Patriots now his part got the ball downfield had enough yardage for the first down but Cedric Jones is just going to take a real hit right there. Bam! Fencing, number 45. Looked like he'd been fired out of a cannon. That ball took one hop. And Marshall, who has great speed for a <laughs> linebacker, <laughs> that looks like a little rugby going on there, Dick. Oh, my. Oh, the Bears have it at the 38-yard line. I think the fans, even the Patriot fans, who might be succumbing to all of this, would want Peyton to have a touchdown. If there's going to be another Bear to score, I think everyone's rooting for this man. Well, he's mounting some yardage, obviously, and, and you have to know that he is the number one priority of that Patriot defense. They're chanting Walter, Walter. <laughs> Wide open, touchdown, Dennis Jeffrey. Nope, he says he stepped out of bounds at the one-yard line. First and goal at the one. Gentry so close to his touchdown. And I wonder who's going to get the call on this one yard line. Well, Walter Payton doesn't have one. They're sending in Perry. Or are they? Yep, they are. Here's McMahon again using his mobility to get open. Nobody home. Oh, I don't think that he was out of bounds when he caught the ball, wasn't he? Maybe we can look at the end of that play. Not that uh, they need any extra help, but it looked as if he, did, he didn't even have one foot down, much less two. From that angle, maybe we can get another view. First of all, the reality of first and goal. Perry. That one registered 3.8. Another Super Bowl record, the first refrigerator to score. <laughs> and the largest running back ever to score a touchdown. And Walter Payton, I guess they figure they got a whole quarter to go. 43 to 3. Look at this. <laughs> better, better open the door at that end. He's coming. the Super Bowl shuffle is on the other sidelines. The officials have had some problems too. Right here. 
touches the ball and the first foot neither foot was in is on the line <laughs> the second one is on the out of bounds so well thank goodness that isn't in a in a three three game that that play occurs as I remember they only made one excursion into Patriot territory. Pluto. He's in he's into outer space. Well that only figures. Frustration. Oh almost almost an inner rage along that sideline but that and disbelief. Robert Weathers hit by Dorson. Now here's Weathers at 222 and Dorson 20 pounds lighter. And was that a picture book tackle? What a beautifully without it. Richardson again getting a hand on a pass intended for Stanley Morgan. Going to even the great ones are replaceable. Well, and watch the frustration mm. of a quarterback. I think he felt he was hit late on that. I think he did. I think he did, and I'm not so sure he wasn't right. Mike Ditka, he, Ditka had to benefit from his experiences at being in two Super Bowls, don't you think, Merle? Said a couple of weeks uh, weeks rest would do it, which was true. First down from the 18. That ball is down when Grogan touched it down at the 30-yard line, and Dan Hampton gets the sack this time Hamp but with this overwhelming performance on defense not not just here today but throughout this year we'll have more mini bear defenses popping up very soon and we'll be back after these messages from your local station it's 5110 Morgan and Stanley Morgan has first and goal at the eight bought them sport coats. Let's watch the refrigerator getting iced down on this one. Look out. Ooh. You think that helmet isn't a weapon? Ooh. Morgan. And he's down for a loss. Well, the Patriots obviously aren't going to go for a field goal here. And the Bear fans don't want their team to give up a touchdown. But they get it. Irving Fryer. First time they've thrown to him today. And Fryer clutches the Patriots. Only touchdown. Fryer, as we said, once wanted so desperately to make the big play to do something. Felt he'd let his team down. Well, there's a little face saving in putting a touchdown on the board, even though the score is 44 to 9. And the Bears lead by 34. There's a hit man. There's a bizarre twist in the contract. Derek Ramsey, another fumble, and the Bears have it at the 43-yard line. Or are they going to rule that an incomplete pass? No, it's a, it's bear a fumble. fumble. Mike Singletary, when you hear the popping, you know he's right around it. But it was Sean Gale who delivered the blow, and Singletary covered the ball. Picks it up. Here's Gale again as Ramsey comes out, gets the ball, and gets Gale. Mm. Boy, they, I mean, we've seen it from every man on the team. They just don't hit, they don't just grab you. They really bury a shoulder and a helmet into you. Buford to punt to Fryer. Oh, beautifully kicked by Buford and down to the four yard line. 36 yard punt and we have a timeout plan offensively tight end was injured on the first uh, scrimmage play another intercept on his way Tim Morrissey to the five yard line Jim Morrissey the rookie from Michigan State well everyone not only in the act but everyone doing something they can talk about that ball, was a gimme. Ball thrown over the head of Collins. Morrissey just tapped from behind on the heels. 83, Cedric Jones polishing him off after he'd been hit on the heels by Tony Collins. What an exciting story in 1985. Indeed. Peyton to the four. And I'm, though it's 44 to 10, 
And there's no question it'll be a mighty roar if Peyton should go in, but unable to make it there. Stopped at the four. That was a fourth and goal after the penalties. They lost it down, of course, with that uh, illegal forward pass. So Peyton will now watch the clock. 5.48 left. Grogan looking for starring and good coverage by Reggie Phillips. 44 to 10, the Bears. 46 to 10, the Bears. He was down, whistled at safety, Chicago. Henry Waxter from Nebraska. And I know you Bear fans have been mispronouncing my name. We walked in and talked to him. Uh, Champaign Illinois and said Henry how do you pronounce your last name because I didn't know he said it's Waxter just like beeswax and so Henry Waxter congratulations you've just scored two points in the Super Bowl Grogan tried to flip it ahead but was already down on one knee on defense score during the regular season during he is and for him to do what he's done on offense has really captured the country Grogan under pressure has to throw quickly and it was Waxter in on top of him along with Tyrone Keyes. Players of the Bears when you consider here's a guy that Buddy Ryan said that was a bad draft choice. He didn't like him when they picked him number one. But he's such a good guy that even with all the publicity the veteran Bears aren't envious. They love him. <laughs> South Carolina you bet. Clemson. I think Buddy, but one of the problems he may have to face is that Buddy Ryan has been rumored to to be the next coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. In fact, uh, it's been said that that the job has been or will be offered to him shortly. And what happens to this great defense if Buddy Ryan leaves Chicago? Now Ditka said to us the other day I want to justify George Hallis's confidence in me I want the old man to be proud of me hmm. the most valuable player in this Super Bowl 20 I voted for the right man Richard Dent number 95 as he has done all year long wreaking havoc in the backfield of the opposition forcing fumbles his sacks the sack leader a day of joy for Richard Dent who Mike Singletary, a genius on the field in running that difficult defense. And this probably the last play of the game. We're getting ready to carry Dick. Dick doesn't want to go yet. He says, wait till I see that final second. Who's going to argue with Perry? He wins most of those. Walter Payton, Mike Ditka, Hungry Chicago, finally champions on this January day in New Orleans. 46 to 10, the final. We'll get the Bears' reaction when we return to the Superdome in New Orleans. So the Chicago Bears are champions of Super Bowl 20. A commanding performance, 46 to 10, and the long drought in the Chicago land is over. Well, Ed, you're, of course, Virginia's husband, the daughter of George Hallis. The Monsters, the Midway, have really returned. With the biggest win in Super Bowl history, uh, only one loss in the 17-1 season. I guess in at least one respect, it's probably well that you won, because otherwise the person who founded this league, George Hallis, might have come back and taken his league away from us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Commissioner. Mike Ditka, the head coach of the World Champions. Back in 1940, the Bears beat the Redskins in a title game 73-0. This wasn't quite as devastating. It'll have to do. 46-10 for the 46 defense. Congratulations, Mike. Bob, his birthday would have been on February 2nd. This is a fitting birthday gift for Mr. Hallis. Will they be doing the Super Bowl shuffle in Chicago tonight? I'm sure they will. You know, I'm going to be doing a little shuffling myself. That's why I want to get out of here. Shuffle on down to Bourbon Street? No, I'm going to stay away from Bourbon Street. i got some family here. I'll spend some time with them. And Relax. We've got an early flight in the morning. Congratulations, Jim. Thanks. Let's go back upstairs to Dick and Merlin. Yeah, <laughs> almost swallowed his tobacco. I'm not sure anyone's going to believe that he isn't going to shovel tonight. Can you describe the feeling for you personally? 
right now it really hasn't sunk in. I, I don't feel anything. It's, uh, it's one of those things where when you have it in your mind for so long, what it would be like, and then after the actual event happens, it, it tends to take away from it. Right now, I'm still a little bumped and bruised from uh, the game, and it really hasn't uh, happened yet.